Precalculus, Chapter 3, Section 5, Exponential Growth and Decay, Modeling Data. So let's start with some compound interest formulas. So after t years, the balance A in an account with principal P, an annual interest rate of R in decimal form, is given by the following formulas. So you may remember these from Algebra 2. So number one, we use when we are, it's compounded periodically, so many times per year, and that's your n number. Number two, we use the formula if our situation is compounding continuously, and that's our base E formula. These are formulas that are good to have memorized. So let's look at example one, using compound interest formulas. So a sum of $10,000 is invested at a rate of 8%. Find the balance in the account after five years subject to quarterly compounding. So plugging in our values, let's make a note that n will equal 4. So our principal is $10,000, and that's times 1 plus our rate as a decimal, 0 0.08 over 4, times 4 times our number of years, 5. You can put all that in your calculator at once, and you'll get $14,859.47. A sum of 5000 is invested at an annual rate of 3.5%. Find the balance in the account after 8 years, subject to continuous compounding. So this time we're going to use our what I call our PERT formula. So amount equals principal times base E raised to our rate times our time. <clears throat> so plugging in our numbers, 5,000 times base E raised to the 0 0.035 times 8. So putting that in your calculator, the ending amount will be around $6,615.65. With money, if you're not told where to round, just always goes to cents place, which is two decimal places. Let's look at these exponential and decay, um, exponential growth and decay models. So this is exponential growth and decay with base e. So you, if you look at the formula, f of t equals a sub naught. So that means your beginning amount times base e raised to the kt. And then if you look at this, this is just another way to write it. So instead of f of t, we have our ending amount. So it is one formula for exponential growth or decay. The way you determine if it's growth is if the k value is positive, if it's greater than zero, then that's a growth situation. And if your k value is negative, that means to simplify that e value, you would take the inverse, one over e to that power. So that would make your base less than one. So if your k value is negative, then it's decay. And if you look at our graphs, those should be familiar to, to you. On the left, if you read the graph left to right, that's an increasing or exponential growth situation. And the graph on the right, as you read it left to right, your eyes fall, that's a decay, a decreasing situation. So look at example three. The exponential function f of x equals 1,066 times base e raised to the 0.042x models the gray wolf population of the Western Great Lakes, which is f of x, and then x is years after 1978. So we're going to use this formula to project the gray wolf's population in the recovery area in 2012. So we first of all have to see how many years that is after 1978. So you can do that by subtracting. So that's 34 years. So that's what we'll plug in for our x value. And so on the right, we just plug in 34 up in the exponent for x. Now you can put that straight in your calculator and find that the estimate of the gray wolf population will be around 4,446 wolves. Now in a real life situation, if we're talking about people or animals, just round to the nearest, in this case, wolf. All right, examples four through eight. So we've got these models describe the population of the indicated country, A, in millions so many years after 2010, T years after 2010. So we've got have India, Iraq, Japan, and Russia. And if you look at those models on the right, those functions, we can see that India and Iraq have a growth situation because our K value is positive. 
But Japan and Russia have a decay situation. They're decreasing because of that negative K value. So number four, what was the population of Japan in 2010? Well, that's our starting date. So our T value would be zero years after 2010. So if we put, put that into our function, we simply get that beginning amount, 127.3 million. Now, what was the population of Iraq in 2012? That's two years after 2010. So we're going to plug in two for T. And then you'll just do the math on your calculator and it'll be around 327.2 million. Which country has the greatest growth rate? rate? Which by what percentage is the population of that country increasing? So we're going to look at the K values and the greatest positive K value is for Iraq, 0 0.019. And then if we move that decimal two places to the right, that will tell us our percentage. So about 1.9% of a growth rate. Now what countries have decreasing populations? I talked about this a moment ago, Japan and Russia, because of that negative K value. And then finally, let's talk about India. When will India's population be um, 1,377 million? So we'll plug that in for our ending amount, and in this case, solve for T. So the first thing we want to do is divide by the 1173 on both sides to isolate that exponential expression. And then we're going to change forms and write it as a logarithm. So this is a natural log of, now I don't want to round um, that division, so I just leave it as a fraction. And now I'm going to divide by my eight thousandths and put all that in my calculator. And it will get around 20, and that means 20 years after 2010. So India's population could be around that amount around 2030. All right, examples 9 and 10. So look at this table. And so we have countries, their 2010 population, projected population in 2050, and then a question mark on the growth rate. Well, right away we can see Colombia's growth rate is going to be positive, and Germany's growth rate will be negative. We need to find out those K values. So we're going to use this exponential growth equation. Our 2010 is our beginning amount and our 2050 is our ending amount. So we'll have for Columbia our ending amount equaling our beginning amount times base E raised to the, we don't know what K is, but we do know that the years that have transpired between those two dates are 40 years. So we'll do just what we did a moment ago. We'll divide by that amount in front of our E, and then we'll rewrite this expression as a natural logarithm. I'm going to leave that just division as a fraction rather than dividing and rounding. And now once we divide by 40, so our K value, and it's good that it's positive, it should be, is um, about 0 .0088. So our projected growth rate, if I move that decimal two places to the right, is about 88 hundredths of a percent. Now for number 10, our ending amount is less than our beginning amount. We just plug those values in in the appropriate spot, and again, we're solving for K. This K value will be different, and it should be negative. So we'll rewrite it as a natural log, just putting those numbers as a fraction. And if we take the natural log of 70.5 over 82.3 and then divide all that by 40, we'll get negative 34 ten thousandths. And then if we write that as a percentage, it's about, it's going to decrease by about 34 hundredths of a percent. Let's talk about half-life. So the half-life of a substance um, is the time required for half of a given sample to disintegrate. And we usually talk about this with radioactive material. <laughs> so here's a little FYI. Carbon-14 decays exponentially with a half-life of approximately 50, 
5,730 years. So after that amount, a given amount of carbon-14 will have decreased or decayed to half of the original amount. Carbon dating, you might have heard that phrase before, is useful for artifacts or fossils up to 80,000 years old. Older, older objects don't have enough carbon-14 left to determine their age accurately. So let's write this in the terms of an equation. So if you can see, first I wrote as half the beginning amount. So instead of my just a value, I have half of a naught equals a naught times e raised to the um, some k value, which we're going to find out for this situation, times the number of years. So my a naughts will divide out, and I'm left with 0.5 equals e raised to the 5730k. And then we're going to solve like we did in the other two problems, rewrite this as a natural log. When we divide by 5730, our k value is negative 0 0.000121. And now we have a value that we can put in to our formula um, for the half-life of carbon-14, which we'll do in a moment. But now let's talk about the half-life of the radioactive element plutonium-239. And that is, the half-life is 25,000 years. So if 16 grams of plutonium-239 are initially present, how many grams are present after 83,000 years? So the first thing we want to do is just what we did for carbon-14, is find out what that K value is in this situation. So like before, our a naughts will divide out, and we're left with 0.5 equals e to the 25,000 k. And then we'll rewrite in log form. We'll divide the ln of a half by 25,000, and our k value is negative 0 0.0000277. So a math model that will reflect the half-life of plutonium-239 involves that k value. So now we want to know how many grams are present after 83,000 years. So we're going to plug in 83,000 for T and the value that we just found for K. And our beginning amount is 16. So in this situation, the ending amount will be about 1 and 61 hundredths grams of the plutonium-239 are left. We're coming back now to the carbon-14 situation, and so we're going to use that K value that we found earlier, the negative .000121. So in 1947, jars containing what are known as the Dead Sea Scrolls were found. Analysis indicated that the scroll wrappings contained 76% of their original carbon-14. Estimate the age of the Dead Sea Scrolls. So that means our ending amount was 76% or 76 hundredths of the original amount. So we can plug that in. And just as before, we can divide out our a naughts. And then we can switch to log form. So the natural log of 76 hundredths equals that decimal times t. Divide by that decimal. So the estimated age of those scrolls is 2,268 years old. In 2000, the population of Africa was 807 million, and by 2011, it had grown to 1,052 million. We're going to use that growth model, or t is the number of years after 2000, to find the exponential growth function that models the data. So we need that specific k value. So we'll put in our ending amount, equaling our beginning amount, times base e, raised to the k, that's what we're trying to find, times 11 for 11 years. We're going to divide by that initial amount. And hopefully you're getting good at this now. You're going to switch into log form. And then divide both sides by 11. And the k value for this situation is about 0.0241. So the exponential growth function that models this situation is a equals a sub naught times base e raised to the 0 0.024 times t. So now let's use that and find out by which year Africa's population will reach 2,000 million or 2 billion. So we'll put that in as our ending amount. Our beginning amount is 807, and we'll use that k value that we just found. Solve for t. So these solving steps 
are the same in these problems. We're going to rewrite in log form, and it's a natural log. And so we'll take the natural log of 2,000 over 807 divided by 24 thousandths. And so it's about 38 years after 2,000, so it'll be in the year 2038.